Welcome back. The next part of this training focuses on homeless history. Homeless history, also known as living situation, helps HMIS to identify chronic homeless status. This element asks about where a client stayed, for how long, and if they've experienced homelessness before. The client is the source of information. Documentation for finalizing eligibility is a separate, more lengthy process. This element is required for all heads of households and other adults, and it must be collected on the project start assessment. Homeless history is different from many other data elements because it is a series of five questions. Since children become adults when they turn 18, any client turning 18 in your project will need responses for this question as of their entry date. If a 17-year-old enters your permanent housing project, consider collecting their responses from the start. Since this element was designed to help identify clients experiencing chronic homelessness, let's begin by defining it. Chronic homelessness is measured to identify those especially vulnerable in our community and those who have been failed by our systems in the past. Today, permanent supportive housing grants use chronic homelessness for eligibility. A client is chronically homeless when they have a disabling condition that meets the HUD definition, are currently in emergency shelter or on the streets, and have 12 months of homeless history, either consecutively in a row or four times totaling 12 months over the past three years. That's a lot to keep track of for both you and your client. So the homeless history questions help determine chronic homeless histories. SH stands for Safe Haven, a rare HUD funded project that is currently not available in North Carolina. Sometimes DV shelters will use safe or haven in their names, but these are more likely to be emergency shelter or transitional housing projects. Let's look closer at the homeless history questions. One example of a homeless history that qualifies is 12 months in a row. Here we have an example where the client is at a shelter, is on the streets camping, and is back in the shelter for a combined total of 12 months. After, they qualify for permanent supportive housing along with a disability. The client's experience of homelessness didn't have to be all in the shelter or all unsheltered on the streets. The other part to the chronic homeless definition is four times over the last three years, totaling 12 months. So what is considered a break in the client's experience? What does a break in a client's homeless history look like for chronic homelessness? There are two types of breaks. One, institutional stays of 90 days or more. Institutional stays that would be in a jail, rehab center, or hospital. Here in our example, our client entered the hospital after a stay in an emergency shelter and then went to the streets after being discharged from a long stay in the hospital. Two, housed stays for seven days or more. Stays in a housed environment for a week or more could mean a doubled up or couch surfing situation. In our example, the client was couch surfing for a month. According to the timeline here, this client was homeless four times for a total of 19 months and so was eligible for PSH in December of 2017. So far, we have not mentioned transitional housing or rapid rehousing. Let's look. Transitional housing does not count towards a chronic homeless history. If clients enter transitional housing projects with chronic homeless status, they will lose that status. The exception is VA-funded transitional housing like grants per diem or GPD projects. Clients maintain their status if they enter qualifying as chronically homeless. Clients entering rapid rehousing projects with chronic homeless status will still be eligible for PSH. Their time in rapid rehousing projects cannot contribute to their homeless history, however. Now that we're familiar with the chronic homeless definition, we'll look at data collection for a homeless history. The first question is called prior living situation. This asks which housing situation the client stayed in the night before entering your project. There are three categories here, literally homeless, institutional, and transitional or permanent housing situations. Here, homeless refers specifically to staying on the street or in a place not meant for human habitation or emergency shelter. 
Institutional situations include hospitals, detox or rehab centers, foster care, and jail or prison. Transitional and permanent housing situations include housed situations uh, such as previously homeless projects or subsidies, private rentals, or transitional housing projects. At the bottom of the list are the standard responses of client doesn't know, client refused, or data not collected. One response under literally homeless situations that I skipped is interim housing. Only permanent supportive housing projects use this option, and even then, it will be really rare. The interim housing response cannot be used as a waitlist. It is only used if the client is identified as chronically homeless, applied for permanent housing, has been accepted, a unit or voucher has been reserved for them, and the client cannot move in immediately. This is about as likely as you being struck by lightning twice, so double check before using this response. Here's what the first question looks like on the paper assessment for street outreach and emergency shelters. It continues with the transitional and permanent prior living situation options. On the project start assessment for all other project types, including supportive services only, prevention, transitional housing, rapid rehousing, other permanent housing, and permanent supportive housing projects, the format changes a little. If a client does not meet the chronic homeless history definition, some sections may be skipped. Follow the columns, arrows, and instructions. If you're unsure, collect all five responses. For the first question, this means that the responses are arranged vertically depending on which category they fit into, homeless, institutional, or transitional and permanent housing. Here's a look at the complete list of responses for the first question, prior living situation. The second question for homeless history is length of stay in previous place. This refers to the amount of time the client stayed in the housed situation just selected for the night before. Here we have the options on the paper assessment for street outreach and emergency shelter. On the paper assessment for all other types, Follow the arrows from the client's response of their living situation last night to Section 2. If the client's response is one of the shaded options, go to Section 3. If the question is not shaded, skip the other homeless history questions and continue to income. Shaded responses mean that the client could potentially qualify as chronically homeless, but more information is needed. The third homeless history question is approximate date this homelessness started. This date records when a client's experience of homelessness began and uses the same homeless history definition as above. This really is approximate. Use holidays, seasons, and other significant dates to help a client select a specific date their current experience of homelessness began. Here it is for street outreach and emergency shelter projects. On the paper assessment for all other project types, the question is located in Section 4 of the Homeless History. The fourth and fifth questions look back further. We ask the number of times and number of months the client was in emergency shelter or on the streets in the last three years. These questions refer to the client's recent history in the context of the chronic homeless history definition, using just emergency shelter and unsheltered experiences only. As a reminder, this does not require documentation and does not count as documentation towards chronic homeless status. It's just a starting point. On the paper assessment for street outreach and emergency shelter projects, the number of times and number of months are required for all heads of households and adults, no matter their previous responses. Select from the options listed. For all other project types, the number of times and months are part of Section 4 and only collected based on the instructions in Section 3. Here are Henrietta's responses for rapid rehousing on August 15th. She stayed in another shelter the night before, had been there for over a year, beginning about July 14th. In the past three years, she has experienced homelessness six times for a total of 19 months. On our paper assessment, this is what her responses would look like for rapid rehousing. Prior living situation is emergency shelter. 
we will follow this column to the next section. Our prior living situation was in the first column, so we've marked the length of stay in prior living situation as one year or longer in the first column. This column then leads to section 3, where it says go to section 4. This is on the next page. In section 4, the approximate date this homelessness started is 7-14-2017, and the number of times she's experienced homelessness in the last three years is four or more with 12 or more months. This concludes part six to the introduction to HMIS data standards, focusing on homeless history for chronic homelessness.